topic 1, topic 2 and up to CD market. Repo market is essentially a secondary market for securities where funds exchange against securities. And the funny thing is that there are various motivations which are at work in the repo market. Why banks, primarily banks involved, the why they are repo transactions. Repo is essentially a transaction today with a commitment or agreement about something in future. So, it has a forward kind of a market personality or character. Forward markets are you agree something which will happen in future. So, we too agree that we would do this in future. Today we agree about that. Forward markets are very common. Exchange rate market may forward market hote hai, share market may forward markets hote hai. Repo market is a forward market in the sense that you agree to do something today with an agreement about something also in future which will happen. That future thing is that if I am selling securities to you I am doing it temporarily not permanently. I will call it back tomorrow on a specified date. So, it has a forward agreement. So, repo is repurchase, repo means repurchase agreement, repurchase which is that agreement that will take place in future. Very different from secondary typical markets for any securities because secondary market is no agreement about buying it back in future. I sell it means I sold my car, I sold my shares means I sold them, my bonds anything. It can go to you and tomorrow you can sell it to somebody else. There is no agreement that I will buy it back again from you. So, this market is different, secondary market very different secondary market. Now, the motivations are various, various things are motivated, motivate the repo market. In fact, in India we have two at least two repo markets, one under LAF or RBI, LAF is liquidity adjustment facility of RBI, I will explain that in the next topic. This they started. Uh, beginning of uh, this century RBI started this LAF liquidity adjustment facility where essentially RBI as the central bank or the head of the money market operates through the repo market a kind of monetary policy. It has nothing to do so much with facilitating banks cash requirements. It has, but it essentially does a monetary policy like thing. Like the municipal authorities do kind of services provide for cities. If there is excess rainfall they make arrangements for the rain water to drain out, which they do miserably, they fail most of the time. And if there is a drought they should make water available. So, this kind of a money supply there is a shortage RBI makes sure there is enough liquidity in the market. If there is too much liquidity RBI has to make sure they have to drain out the excess liquidity which has been a case I will show you the data. Um, the, when I started teaching this course in 2008 first time I taught it for this MSc students third year MSc students first batch I when I looked at the data I could not believe that bulk of the transactions in the repo market are reverse repo. 90 percent transactions more than 90 percent transactions were reverse repo transactions in a particular year. What does it mean? It meant that there is excess liquidity in the system which RBI is continuously draining out. So, RBI's point of view that LAF segment of repo on which I have data is essentially a monetary policy and monetary policy if our repo is a monetary policy instrument then you have to remember that there are other monetary policy instruments which also RBI uses. So, it is in a package in a basket of RBI other ones I mentioned CRR open market operations and a traditional monetary policy policy instrument in other countries which we do not use much because RBI does not traditionally does not use it 
have not used it in India it is called the bank rate. Now what is bank rate is kind of an interest rate I will explain that again in the next topic. So the bank rate if you look at other countries European countries first world countries even second world countries or third world countries bank rate is often important but not in India. In India CRR open market operations repo these are important. Now is that all that the repo market no there is a market segment of repo on which I do not have data where banks interact with banks and non banks etc. And there the repo transactions are essentially from the point of view of a bank's liquidity requirements it has nothing to do with monetary policy because banks individually do not operate monetary policy RBI operates that. So, it is the banks requirements banks SLR requirements require they are required to show some securities which they do not have and they do a kind of patchwork there what they do they go to another bank do you have securities X say they say yes ok take this cash give that to me for 2 weeks 2 months I have to show the SLR I do not have securities that means I have had not I have not had cash which I have which, which I could have invested in securities which I could show in my SLR. So, do you have securities and they are particular type of securities also SLR does not allow RBI any security to specify what kind of securities. These are the things that you learn and your understanding of this entire money market will be more complete when I go to the next topic I take up RBI in details. So, they go for SLR requirements then they for CRR they ask for cash they sell securities to get the cash they have to show the cash every week with a fortnight's cap. So, two, four, two, two weeks back the Friday the position I had in with respect to deposits I have to show the CRR today with the RBI not show it actually keep it. So, from banks point of view the motivation is very different and therefore, there is a market repo on which I do not have data I have data only on the RBI side from the RBI side which is on the RBI's LAF repo which is monetary policy. Now, earlier there was a some trouble and then they stopped some securities in the 90 early 90s there was a scam and then they brought back all securities today treasury bills government dated securities CPs, CDs they are all allowed in the UTI units they are all allowed in the repo market to be used as securities. It is a very open market, but when LAF auctions are held regarding repo by RBI they are held by RBI they do not allow non banks to come in they allow only banks and some primary dealers like DFHI etcetera they allow. And STCI Securities and Trading Corporation of India there are some organizations institutions non banks I may take up at the end of the course I will prepare some notes for you on non banks which I do not have in the topic list which may interest you. So, they are not uh, the few primary dealers and uh, you know were allowed along with the banks in LA non banks are not allowed to um, participate. Now, they may they change things also from time to time. The liquidity adjustment facility and LAF started 5th June 2000. I have the note date exact date here also, I will talk about that. And um, the market segment, as I told you, they do not have RBI that does not publish the data, data, etc. And the idea about repo being I, why RBI is so active with the repo market this idea is if you look at the money market which is a short term market now banks funding banks liquidity how you are helping you have developed the call market okay. Then you have this um, surplus cash to be invested in the treasury bills market which you have made very competitive because you have 91 day. 182 day 364 day 14 day wala any not there. Now, you are also allowing the repo transactions 
two kinds. One is the market repo and in addition to that you have the LF repo. So what is happening the short term money market is becoming very competitive. Now according to micro theory or economic theory if a market becomes more competitive prices should come down and prices should near each other even if it is a differentiated market. Even in case of a differentiated market where you have different products being sold in the market like the car market or the refrigerator market, the AC market and you name consumer, dur consumer durables, competition may not be perfect competition which we learn in micro theory, may be monopolistic competition, may be oligopolistic competitions, but competition does overall one thing, they through competition the prices come down excess prices, monopoly prices do not remain there so much. So prices come down and product qualities improve also because they are competing and prices also come closer to each other. So there is not much of a difference between products sometimes in terms of prices all right. So in a particular car segment market if it is very competitive you will see that prices are quite different you will have a difficulty in selecting a Ford product and a Hyundai product and a Maruti product where the cars are very similar. The designs may be different that is whether it is a differentiated market. Now what has happened is that this active participation of the RBI in the money market particularly where banks are operating has made it very competitive. But I have found the treasury bill market also has become very competitive. I will show you the yield to maturity there have a very close to each other unbelievable. A one year treasury bill and a 182 day treasury bill and a three month old treasury bill 91 all have yield to maturity very similar, very interesting. So they are becoming competitive and the prices also come close to each other. So this is one of the things they are trying to do and which I found in <coughs> Professor Bole's book RBI's language probably Professor Bole has quoted it at one, one, one chapter I think in the call market chapter or somewhere in the repo chapter where repo has been discussed is that they are trying to create an interest rate corridor, short term interest rate corridor. Corridor means a passage, long passage through which people travel, walk back and forth. So they are trying to create a corridor within which, which has a boundary walls within which the interest rates are going to move. They may have short term fluctuations, variances, but they are within a limit, within a corridor. And I try to plot the data and find out whether the interest rate corridor is there or not. So you can see that data. You can check that yourself which RBI attempts, attempted to do or RBI still tries to do. And Professor Bole's book has mentioned that language phrase interest rate corridor. So we have to see that. So they are trying to essentially make the market very competitive short term money market. So this is about the repo. Now repo is uh, international definition of repo is injection of funds. So the interest rate RBI is asking under LF when it is injecting funds and reverse repo is when RBI is allowing the banks to park their surplus funds with them that is a reverse repo in some ways as if RBI is borrowing from them actually RBI is by borrowing means RBI is helping out the banks. surplus fund interest so you would expect therefore the reverse repo rate will be lower than the repo rate because repo rate is when banks are asking for loans RBI charges a higher interest rate and when RBI is helping the banks to park their surplus cash with itself give it to me I will, I will have go down to give you stuff and even you will get an interest on that that rate is lower. So the reverse repo rate is lower and the repo rate is higher this is what you will see in the data I will bring the data out for you. Yeah. So, so when the security is being sold, it is sold at that uh, after whatever the final amount is there, after like paying the interest at that amount is sold at market price. I have not understood your question. So, for example, a bank has to give its excess cash to RBI. So what would the bank do is buy RBI securities or just wear the cash? No, again securities. RBI is giving securities. So now when the RBI has to take back the security, will it pay as per the amount that has been created after paying the interest at the mm. record? Mm. Market, it is they call it market determined because this rate is decided through an auction. 
RBI agents, people and uh, banks etc who are participating in the repo market sit together and there is an auction and the discount rate is decided there both the repo and the reverse repo. And since they are not dictated by RBI they call it market, but not a purely market because there are other participants who often are non bidders just like treasury bills who will have to accept the rate. So, the bidding is allowed only by a selective group of participants. So, it is market not purely free market, market to some extent as opposed to RBI prefixing it. RBI could have said this is the interest rate job, Lena Leo Nalo, that is not the case, they negotiate through auction. So, that and that sense it is market, but there is a market repo where no RBI is there where banks inter interact with banks and non banks in the repo market. That data I do not have that is a pure market segment of repo and this LF segment they call it market determined repo and reverse repo rates where auctions are held clear ok ok. Now, I come to it is good news I come to the last, but very important point. This I have been studying since I was in college and I was we were given some English books where in England this concept first developed and there are famous economists who wrote books and discussed these issues. And I used to wonder what is the relevance to India because I do not get anything about India. Finally, when I got something about India, it is all very negative. It is still very negative about India, but this thing is very important without talking about it. I cannot close money market. This is called commercial bills. This is called commercial bills. So, I have to talk about it, and only after I have talked about it that I can close this topic. Commercial bill market I have to talk about often it is referred to as the bill market. Oh I tell you it used to be so boring, but the books are great books some of the books may be in the library if you want to know about the English system how it started. It started I, I read about England the bill market in England, Sears one famous author used to be when I was a college student like you first year, second year student. What say R Sears, S A Y E R S, Sears book was famous on banking wonderfully written very well written English author. Now, a commercial bill uh, like you know in case of C P C D I used a term like Eusen's um, promissory note in case of commercial bill there is a term that is used to describe it, it is called negotiable post dated check, term is used called negotiable post dated check. negotiable post dated check. This is it I mean the more our system will get organized Indian system, Indian markets etcetera the more you will have the commercial bill market acquiring importance, but the commercial bill market has not acquired much importance in India so far because our money market if you look at it is so much of that even the entire economy so much of that is unorganized market and there is a huge black money thing there. Some people used to say it is about 40 50 percent of our GDP and so much of unorganized sector that the commercial bill market really could not develop much. So, what is this CB? 
a negotiable post data check. It is very simple and you will also understand and appreciate probably why it is important. The entire business world, the economy, where the economy lies, the market world works on the basis of a few features like trust, um, uh, future payments, borrowing, they are based on that. So, I will produce some goods, I have to do so much before finally, I can produce the goods and the production itself can take time, sometimes some items take 6 months to produce or 2 months or 1 month to produce. Now, what I have to do? I have to arrange for the raw materials, I have to first have the plant, then I have to arrange the raw materials and the labor and then have the production plan, have a future output target and produce, determine the prices, find the markets where to sell them. So, it is a lot of work that is why not many people wishes to become an entrepreneur, because it is just so much work, it is easy to go and work for somebody, get a salary at the end of one come home Bapre. forget about the rest. Otherwise, if you are an entrepreneur you have just so much headache, everything you have to take care of. Sometimes for a new company the entrepreneur does not have much helping hand, in a established company the entrepreneur is supported by the, you know all kinds of people they he can hire, he can hire the CEO, he can he, the board of directors can have the managing directors, the other specialists around who then do the work, but when it is be new you have to do the work. Now, what is happening here is that when you are buying the raw material from the raw material supplier and here you are yet to earn enough revenue or you have sold something where the revenue has not come because the agreement there has been 6 months later they will pay, but you are going to stop your work here, you are going to stop production here. So, you have to keep on paying the workers wages, the overhead fixed costs, electricity bill, water charges, other rents, the raw material supplier you have to supply. Now, what happens is that often these other than the essential ones like the raw material supply, you may also get into some sort of an loan kind of a system where you buy the goods, but you do not pay today you promise to pay later. Now, therefore, the trust becomes very important, therefore, it becomes very important that when you are not paying him when he has sold something to you and that may be located in two different cities, one is in Madras, one is in Kanpur, they do not know each other that well, is they are not neighbors, they did not grow they did not grow up together going to same school, they have never seen each other. Now, so there these agreements are required where post data checks are checks play an important role that I do not pay you now, I, I can write a check, but you will get the payment 6 months later or 2 months later. Therefore, the question of trust comes whether I would sell goods at all to this fellow in Kanpur, because I would not get the payment today. So, because of this nature of business where things do not happen right away, it is often based on borrowing, future payments, forward contracts, a repo you have just seen. This kind of an institutionalized system which you have, it is important that banks play a role where banks can stand a guarantor for that seller saying do not worry, do not worry, I know this buyer. I know his financial standing. So, if you sell goods it, it would not be defaulted and worse come worse I am going to keep some assets of this fellow, so that if he defaults I will pay you that amount. So, now you are going to get into various complex negotiated deals agreements, where goods have changed hands from the seller to the buyer who is also a producer maybe, of course, but the payments have not been made, they are where commercial bills come, they are nothing but negotiable post dated checks. So, the two parties have to negotiate, ok you will pay me one month later, but one month later that I have to wait 
you just cannot pay me the price that I've shown, which you could have paid if you had, which you would pay if I if you pay today. But if you pay one month later, you will have to pay more because I have to wait out one more month. So they agree into like a legal agreement, like going to a court on stamp paper. There are stamp papers available from court on which you can formally agree in the presence of lawyers, etc., with proper signatures and documents that this is the bill that we create. So they can go into a very formal negotiated deal where both the parties agree when the payment will be done. And that is how a commercial bill comes into existence. And is essential to the functioning of the business world. But the more the business world is in the underground, the less we know about these commercial bills, the less commercial bills are supported by the banks, because the banks belong to the organized world. If the banks belong to the organized world, they do not have much confidence to support the commercial bills of the unorganized market. So, the bill market is just not developing in India, still not developing in India, I will show you that. Okay. So, it is a very important topic I started today, I will go very slowly. There are various kinds of commercial bills, it's very interesting also. To me, it's very interesting also. Now, so commercial bills are post dated checks, fine, negotiable, everybody, and an agreement basically between a seller of goods and a buyer of goods. Now, suppose the seller is A and the buyer is B, and B has declared that I cannot make the payment today, I do not have cash. I will make the payment 6 months later. A then draws a bill that is writing a bill which B has to agree. A then draws a bill stating the amount that B is required to pay on a given date, a specific date will be mentioned. B then will acknowledge the bill by countersigning or whatever, his obligation to pay the written amount. A who has sold the goods, who drew the bill, who wrote the bill and make B who is the buyer of the goods to agree to that, acknowledge that. A is called the drawer of the bill and B is called the drawee of the bill. So, two parties have small names, the drawer of the bill and the drawee of the bill. And the drawee of the bill the guy who is supposed to make the payment in future and the guy who sold the goods did not get the payment, the poor fellow there. So, he has to go through, but he has to run his business too. So, he cannot say I will only sell goods to, he probably cannot have the freedom, he does not have the freedom to say I will sell goods only who can make me payment today. Of course, that will be the first preference. It is just the present discounted value concept coming here. Since he will make a payment in future, and today is more attractive than future, in future if he has to wait, he will have to pay more to make it equally attractive. Present discounted value again coming here, because this guy what he will pay 6 months later, the present discounted value would be smaller today. The interest rate again coming into the picture, therefore commercial bills do carry an interest cost that he has to make to wait. Throughout money market you will find the existence of interest rates, whatever be the context. Same thing present discounted value stuff coming out here. Oh, 6 months wait karna padega, jyada dena padega aapko, aaz dhenge commission milega, shasta mein ho jayega. Today is more valuable than tomorrow, but tomorrow you have to do, to make it valuable, I have to add more monetary terms to it or whatever value to it. Achha. Now. Draw and the draw. A once this is very interesting now. Now look what game starts. Once the bill has been acknowledged by both the parties and it is a proper commercial bill, and a smart guy will make it um, make it um, acceptable in the eyes of law, make it legal with proper documents, etc. Now A suddenly has wings flying. In a proper commercial world, he even does not wait 6 months. What he does, he goes to the bank and cashes it. He says, here is a commercial bill, I sold this goods to him, seller in Kanpur. 
company X and he says oh yes yes we know the company bank has to know he will make this amount of payment later but if you give me cash today you can have this amount of income because I will ask you give you a discount on it. So, the bank purchases it at a discount bank waits out till maturity and cashes in finally, by recovering the money from that buyer in Kanpur the drawee six months later and makes an income. So, this fellow actually what he does he draws the bill and he can even benefit because the price he may extract from the bank is higher than he is getting the cash today higher than what he would have got he would have received if the buyer of those goods have made the payment right away. So, part of the interest he recovers immediately and makes an extra he benefits and you can see this justifies the existence of commercial bills. Because if there is a commercial bill situation and both the parties can trust each other they benefit and the intermediary who was nowhere in the picture probably suddenly finds a windfall gift. Are ye Tata consultancy khari de hai ye to call payment kare gai who would mistrust buy the bill buy the bill immediately bank makes a profit. So, the whole range of reward system make it survive the commercial bill very interesting. Now, if your parents are in business ask them about commercial bill if they know. So, now he can go to the bank sell it bill. So, secondary market is immediately created secondary market he sells it off bank waits out till the bill will mature and then finally, change the amount at maturity get the money and bank goes back happy home goes back home with that money it is pocket. Now, having told you about this com basic concept of commercial bill what I have to do I will have to tell you about various kinds of commercial bills that exist. Before I tell you I, I will tell you an, a story about uh, in India where commercial bills are mostly found not in the organized market export import market mein kuch hai, not in the organized market. So, international commercial bills are created also international but our bulk of the commercial bills are in the corners and the pockets of the origin of Indian industry which is the wholesale market this and that the trading communities where which started God knows 100 years back 150 years back. And the commercial bills are operating there you would not believe me the commercial bills are working there which are hardly any legal document a kagaj ke upar often if you go to a wholesale market you will see there is a clip and some small size papers and it looks like a small pad it is not actually pad loose sheets and we do not have a habit of writing cash memos and you bought something they will write something on it maybe a date is mentioned not even a signature not even a rubber stamp of the shop there forget about a company not even the rubber stamp of the shop something is written this is you have bought this amount and a date is given and that is the cash memo that they give us I have seen that happening. Commercial bills in our economy is often traditionally created like that on a piece of paper and how does it function because when it comes from this shop with maybe with a rubber stamp now because it is a commercial bill and the payment will be made in future they all exist and coexisted for years centuries Bab Dada Sek Saath. They know each other very well within that closed domain commercial bills are operating all the time and though there is no mistrust. So, if a foreign expert ever <laughs> looks at these commercial bills of Indian wholesale market trading community etcetera business community commercial they would get extremely surprised they cannot believe probably commercial because to them commercial is a very formal document it is like a legal paper it is a like a you know a, 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 you can take it to a court and get it accepted by the judge would look at it. But here commercial bills on a piece of paper with a rubber stamp signature bhi pata di chal rahe. Kiska hai? commercial bill tayar ho gaya call payment ho 
So it's unbelievable how the Indian economy and you know something so strong people trust the business community would trust that method of creating commercial bills and that kind of commercial bills there won't be any problem. However informal, however shabby, however untidy it may look, however incomplete it may look like a commercial proper in comparison to a proper commercial bill there is no problem with the business community. They lived with that they have they have seen that from their childhood these commercial bills. Often future payments are made within the market or within the producer and the market and the producer is there God knows from how many years they are supplying it. And the wholesaler who first purchased the product have no uh, lack of confidence there. So, a simple commercial bill like that will easily work. 